Wrapping up day one at SEC Football Media Days in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Vince Ferrara, 99.1 The Sports Animal, 991 The Sports Animal. Dot com. Follow us on all our socials at SportsAnimal991. We had a great crew here today. Appreciate the hard work of Jay Leifert, our engineer, who got in here yesterday, got everything set up, running the show on our spot, the radio road. Jimmy Himes in retirement, but still here working for us, and we appreciate nobody does this event uh, any better than Jimmy Himes, and we appreciate his hard work today. Josh Ward co-hosting Josh and Swain, Tyler Ivins from... Tyler and Will afternoon show as well. And then Tommy Sweat helping us out, uh, producer for uh, 99.1 The Sports Animal. So day one saw Greg Sankey, SEC commissioner, kick things off. And he talked a lot about the NIL. I thought a lot of what he said was interesting with the NIL. And look, we haven't heard any student athletes talk about how they would want to be employees. That's something that's been a topic of conversation. He really laid it out from the SEC standpoint, the struggles that they have right now with a lack of oversight, with the third parties trying to get involved with these student athletes, and and then the states not being able to match up what they're doing and the inconsistencies that come along with that. And a lot of that is the reason why they have gone to Congress to try to get some uniformity. So really interesting stuff from Greg Sankey on that and many other topics as well. Uh, Also, I visited with Hendon Hooker right after our show today. We'll play that for you on Sports Talk on Tuesday. Excellent visit with the VFL. He was here representing Bush's Beans. And how about Hendon Hooker presenting me with that can of beans, Hendon, Bush's Baked Beans. So we appreciate them making Hendon Hooker available. He did some media stops, uh, uh, including ours here this morning uh, at SEC football media days in Nashville, and he talked about how he's loving it in Detroit, how he's not trying to rush it with his leg, and and just trusting it in terms of the weight. So that's going to be a process, and can't wait to see him in that Honolulu blue on the sidelines and then maybe even on the field at some point this season. But he's enjoying it there, and he talked about his brothers there. Emmanuel Mosley's always been a mentor for him. He's from Greensboro, North Carolina as well. He's got two other VFLs we talked about on that Detroit Lions team. And of course, high praise from uh, Joe Milton III. And he said Joe Milton made him a better quarterback. And you hope as a Tennessee fan that Hendon Hooker has made Joe Milton a better quarterback. So he has extreme confidence in Joe Milton and the kind of quarterback he's going to be this season. So enjoyed our visit with Hendon Hooker. Also talked about Joe Milton as a cook. So you'll get to hear that in our interview as well. So the teams that went today, Brian Kelly and LSU went with the commish. Brian Kelly, I thought, did a real nice job. I'd say he would be the coach MVP at day one. He took some questions. He was asked, so are you ready to announce that Jalen Daniels, Jaden Daniels, excuse me, is your starting quarterback? Well, of course he is. He was here representing LSU at SEC Football Media Days, but he handled it well. He didn't snap back at the reporter, and then he was also asked about Jeremy Pruitt and the sanctions, the punishment that Tennessee got. He also didn't snap back when he possibly could have and said, look, you know, that that they did get some punishment, haven't read the whole thing, but um, again, handled that really well and uh, I thought spoke confidently about his LSU team. They got a lot of praise today, and rightfully so, as a contender in the West with Alabama. Uh, we also heard from a couple of LSU Tigers talking really confidently about uh, Tennessee and Joe Milton. Jaden Daniels, he said that Joe Milton is his guy. That's his dog, I think, is the exact way he phrased it. And he roomed with Joe Milton and rode with Joe Milton at the Manning Passing Academy. So those two really bonded, a lot of respect. I asked him, what kind of season do you expect Joe Milton to have? He said, a a great year. And he said he has never seen arm strength like Joe Milton has. He said, off of his left, left knee, one leg, left knee on the ground, he threw it 50 yards to the goalpost. So another individual, another peer raving about the uh, arm strength and the ability of Joe Milton. And, you know, another thing that was a theme with a lot of players was the atmosphere in Neyland Stadium and how good Tennessee is with some of these past opponents. Of course, Tennessee got the better of LSU a year ago in Baton Rouge. And Makai Wingo talked about how talented Tennessee was, the tempo, things like that, that 
LSU had to deal with in that route. That act, that game obviously made a national statement in Tennessee's favor, but that turned the LSU season around, including even Jaden Daniels said that that game, even though LSU lost, he found some things that could work for him to build on moving forward, and he did because he was outstanding the rest of the year. Missouri talked about Tennessee and the atmosphere. Darius Robinson said the atmosphere at Neyland Stadium is the best in the league. He said it is unbelievable, unbelievable, said it several times. And he said that he thought last year Tennessee had the best offense and that Hendon Hooker by far was the best quarterback in the SEC. So he had a lot of praise. And then also um, Chris Adams, uh, Abram, uh, excuse me, Chris uh, Abrams Drain from Missouri also said that the atmosphere is so loud there in Knoxville and the offense, when Missouri's offense was on the field, the Missouri's offense, they couldn't hear the plays because of how loud Neyland Stadium was. Nia Smith from Texas A&M, he also talked about how he, he's excited to play in Knoxville A&M playing the Tennessee Volunteers in October. He said it was two years ago. It was really nice and looking forward to seeing what Tennessee has because he had a really good year a year ago. So the other coaches, Jimbo Fisher, wouldn't really talk about the dynamic with Bobby Petrino that's maybe the most interesting thing about Texas A&M this year. He did sneak it in there that Petrino is going to call the plays and hopefully run you know, the offense, but uh, Anaya Smith kind of alluded to that as well, that now Jimbo has so many things going on as head coach, Bobby Petrino can kind of not be the perfectionist that Jimbo Fisher is, and he's instilled confidence in them. So we'll see if that makes a, a positive impact on A&M. The interesting thing there is, is how does that dynamic work between Jimbo and Petrino? He was asked about that, and of course he said, why, why, would, it, why would it be bad? Why would it be volatile? So that's TBD on how that all works. And then Eli Drinkwitz gets the filibuster of the day award because he basically got up there at the podium in the main room and read his entire roster. And then, at least to his credit, joked about it at the end. He was like, you know, I I tried to get through my entire time so I wouldn't have to field any questions from you guys uh, about what I said that could go viral on Twitter. So that, of course, is a reference back to him talking about what his players make in NIL compared to people that have real jobs, normal jobs in uh, in public service. And uh, and he took a lot of criticism for that because he makes many millions of dollars and people didn't want to hear him uh, making references to the money that kids and players make in the NIL. So that kind of blew up and he was trying to avoid that. But we know coaches do that. They try to use up all their time to not field questions, but he did have to. But that was noteworthy from today as well. A couple other quick things. Cole Kublik talked to our Jimmy Himes. Jimmy works this uh, media days like no other. Jimmy asked Cole Kublik, hey, with Anthony Richardson being a top five pick and having some similarity, some comparison, it can uh, Joe Milton III be similar to that? And he said, absolutely. He's as talented as any quarterback on the planet. Now, I didn't say he was the best quarterback. He said he's at, as talented in terms of skill set on the planet, and he is very high on Joe Milton. So uh, you're going to continue to hear that this week on people being asked about Joe Milton and talking about Joe Milton because of the upside and the potential that's there with, obviously, that skill set. All right, tomorrow, day two, it is Tuesday. It'll be Vanderbilt in Georgia in the morning session. Of course, you got Clark Lee with his new contract extension that he got after two seasons. And then Kirby Smart, national championship coach. And he's had a tumultuous offseason as well with all of the legal issues there in Georgia He's going to field a lot of those questions about what's going on with arrests and so forth. We'll see how Kirby Smart handles that tomorrow. And then the afternoon session, you got a couple first-year coaches in Auburn and Mississippi State with Hugh Freeze and Zach Arnett. So that's the four teams that will go tomorrow, day two. Hey, look, we have complete coverage at 991thesportsanimal.com. Go to our website. Front and center is our central page. There's videos. There's audio. All our staff putting a ton of content in there, and it's exclusive content 
as well. That'll do it for day one SEC Football Media Days from the Grand Hyatt in Nashville. I'm Vince Ferrar at Vince Sports on Twitter. We'll talk to you tomorrow, day two, here from Nashville. See ya.